I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com, Chapter 7. In this module, we will look at the accounting considerations for uncollectible receivables. Now, when a company directly extends credit, one of their greatest risks and perhaps one of their greatest costs is the chance that some customers may not pay, that those receivables will go uncollected. Customers might go broke, there might be a dispute, customers refuse to pay. These amounts, these uncollectible accounts, are also sometimes called bad debts. Now I've always thought that's a bit of a misnomer because debts are amounts owed to others, but in any event, the term bad debts is nevertheless used to frequently describe amounts that you are not able to collect from a customer. There are several ways in which one can account for or think about uncollectible accounts. One way or method is a direct write-off method. With the direct write-off method, we simply don't concern ourselves in the accounting records with uncollectible accounts until we finally determine that an account cannot be collected at which time we write it off. So I say a specific account receivable is removed from the accounting records at the time it is finally determined to be uncollectible. Here is a journal entry for that. We debit uncollectible accounts expense and we credit accounts receivable at the time we write off the account. We no longer anticipate collecting that amount. The direct write-off method is acceptable in those cases where bad debts are not material in amount. It's also to be used for tax purposes. The direct write-off method, though, with that method, revenues from credit sales are recognized in one period, but the cost of the uncollectible accounts related to these sales may not be recognized until a subsequent period. So we have a problem with the direct write-off method from a conceptual or gap point of view. Good matching is not achieved. We have sales in one period and an expense that is attendant to those sales recorded in a subsequent period. It's better if we can have the expense recorded in the same time period as, sale, as the sale. But here's an example that illustrates we have the sale, the revenue recognition over here in say year one, Perhaps we don't write off the account until year three, sometimes later. That's when the expense is recorded. Hence, revenue recognition in one period, expense recognition in another period. A poor matching is re it results. So generally accepted accounting principles prefer and require, if material, an alternative allowance method that results in a better matching of revenues and expenses. So with an allowance method, we have sales and expenses for the bad debts recorded in one period. That is, we estimate the amount that we're not going to collect and record that estimate as an expense in the same period that we record the sale. Later, when we write off a specific account, there's no charge against income. We're instead writing it off against an allowance account that was established back in year one. And this will make more sense when we look at the related journal entries. The allowance method for uncollectibles is preferred. Total receivables are reported on the balance sheet. An allowance account, which is a contra asset, reduces the receivables to the amount expected to be collected, termed the net realizable value. Looking at a balance sheet, here I've got total accounts receivable of 425,000. We have the offsetting allowance, the portion we anticipate not being able to collect, 25,500 giving rise to the net realizable value or the net accounts receivable of $399,500. So that's the balance sheet disclosure for the uncollectible accounts with an allowance method. 